We are back at it with another video, and in today we're going to do a deep dive of some Hoka trail running shoes. The trail running scene, sub ultra, ultra, has definitely blown up. We're seeing more runners strap on some trail shoes and hit the trails. Brands have noticed, especially Hoka. They said, you want the trails? We are going to give you the gear you need to be successful on your endeavors. And I keep getting, does Hoka finally, do we finally have a full rotation of trail shoes? Do we have a daily trainer? Do we have a long run shoe? Do we have a road to trail shoe? Do we have a race day shoe? And all I can say is sit back, relax, and let's dive in to some of the straight up fire Hoka has been delivering in 2022 and 2023. Now, before I get into it, smash that like button and hit the subscribe button. It costs you nothing. We are back at it with another video, and in today we're going to do a deep dive. The first shoe we're going to talk about is the Hoka Speed Goat 5. This shoe is definitely hitting that daily trainer category. It's funny, I feel like this used to be a lot of people's race day shoe. But my personal opinion, this is a great daily trainer. Hey, I want to hit the trails. I want to get six, seven, maybe even up to 14 miles. I think this shoe absolutely handles it. I think the foam is nice, but it's a little bit firmer. So I found when I got into the 20s to almost 30 miles, the shoe was good. It just wasn't great. I was looking for a little bit extra for this. The other thing is the upper is really good and the tongue is just a little too flimsy for me. So when I'm running long distance out on the trails, again, when I'm doing 10 miles, not an issue, but I'm getting closer to that 50K marker. Again, the shoelaces, they start digging into my foot a little bit. So again, I think Hoka absolutely is crushing it with the speed goat. I just think it changed categories in 2022, 2023. You would see this on a lot of starting lines, but I think we have better options for them. We have shoes that are a little bit more responsive, a little bit more comfortable, and are made to go long distance. Again, I love running in the shoe for those daily miles. Could you race in it? Absolutely. Do I think Hoka has better options? Uh, yeah, and we'll get into that. The next shoe we're gonna talk about is the Challenger ATR7. The Challenger is a new series to me. Honestly, I've seen it in the past and I said, meh, and I just kind of passed over it. But this year, I'm so glad I got this on my feet. This, I think, fits in two perfect categories. This is your road to trail shoe. The foam that you have here, the comfort level of the upper, is really nice on the roads. I've done maybe two miles to the trails and these handled the, tr the roads amazingly. My feet felt great and I felt really secure on there. And then when I did get on the trails, the shoe overall just handles it really well. We do have a high stack here. So I know a lot of times people are like, high stack, ooh, do I wanna take that on the trails? Yes, you absolutely wanna take this on the trails because it's a little bit wider, so you don't feel it. And also the foam, it's comfortable, but it's not that squishy comfortable where you feel like, whoa, where am I going? So this fits that road to trail shoe, but it also fits that long run shoe. I'm talking about that, that run. You know you're gonna be out there four, five, maybe even six hours, and you want that extra comfort. We're talking about you're hitting the trails, you're trying to get as many miles as you can, and you don't wanna destroy your legs. This is where this comes in handy. I think you can take this out for some long, long miles and come back and still feel pretty good because this foam is a lot, but it does the job. It's very responsive. And the other reason why I like this for a long run shoe, this thing is super light. This thing, I, it might be one of the lighter Hoka shoes that I've seen. It kind of reminds me of some of the road shoes of how light it is, but it can definitely handle the trails. Keep in mind, this is a good grip, but I would, if you're going on a road trail that has extreme tech, maybe go with a different shoe. But I would say for most trails that people are doing, the Challenger is absolutely going to answer the bell. You could use this again for all these rotations. You could use this for the next shoe we're going to talk about is the Challenger ATR7. The Challenger is a new series to me. Honestly, I've seen it in the past and I said, meh, and I just. 
And the last one I'm going to recommend is the Mafate Speed 4 Azure Race Day Shoe. Whew. I cannot say enough about this shoe. Uh, the previous Mafates, meh, they didn't look great, they didn't feel great, but man, the 4 is just a completely different shoe. This dual density foam is extremely comfortable underfoot. I've taken this out on 50Ks on muddy terrain, rocky terrain with roads. Every terrain I've hit, bam, this absolutely answered the bell. I used this out on a pacing a buddy on Eastern States, and we're talking about big climbs and big descents, and at no point did I feel like this shoe couldn't handle the terrain. I'm telling you, this is probably my overall favorite Hoka trail shoe, and it just crushes. I'm telling you, it crushes on those races. It's light, it's comfortable, and you can just cruise for miles in the shoe. Yes, again, similar to the Challenger and to the Hoka Speed Goat, you can use this for other ones, you can use this for long runs, you can use this for daily ones, but I'm telling you, if you want to save your shoes and use them for those big races, the Mafate Speed 4 is that race day shoe. It looks. And the last one I'm going to recommend is the Mafate Speed 4 Azure Race. So there you have it. Those are the three shoes I'm using from Hoka in my rotation. I think all of them could be a shoe by itself that you would absolutely love. But if you are looking for that rotation, yeah, I think Hoka finally has shoes that you could build one brand, one rotation, and be extremely happy with. But if you're saying, hey, Cody, I don't want all three shoes. I really only want two. Well, there you go. These would be the two I'd go with. I'd use this for my daily runs and my long runs, and I'd be using this again for long runs, but also for race day. When you go, well, Cody... I don't want off. I don't even want two. I just want one Hoka shoe. I can't. I can't. I can't make the decision. Both of these shoes are fantastic. And I think if you want the, the Challenger, you go, man, thank you, Cody, for that recommendation. And I think if you go with the Mafate, you go, man, Cody, thank you for that. So there you have it. Those are the three shoes that I'm using from Hoka in my road. Now I gave you what I think the shoe rotation should be for the Hoka, but I also did one better. I reached out to one of the Hoka pros, Adam Peterman. You know, Western States 100 winner. You know, Uroy first male place. You know, second place free trail, trail runner of the year. Yeah, you know, Adam Peterman. And he let me know these are the two shoes he is reaching for and has built his rotation out of it. Now he does have some prototypes, unfortunately, we're not that cool. We don't get those. But the two shoes he's wearing in his rotation are the Speed Goat and the Mafate. Again, you can build your rotation any way you want. You can get all three of those shoes or you can just get two. It's really up to you. But I will say Hoka is definitely delivering shoes that can... Now I gave you what I think the shoe rotation should be for the Hoka. <laughs> 